Dehancer may be one of the best film emulation plugins out there. Here's my review. Over the years, I've been using other color grading plugins, but when Dehancer reached out to us, I knew that I needed to give it a try. Let's go over installation, which is pretty easy and straightforward. Head over to Dehancer.com and go to their products. Choose a file that corresponds to your operating system. For me, this is Windows. Install the file, follow the instructions, and then open up DaVinci Resolve. Dehancer should already be installed. To confirm, add a video to the timeline, head to your color tab and add Dehancer into a node. And then all you need to do is click the button to download all of the camera profiles. That way you can choose the camera that you recorded with and Dehancer will know what to do with the footage in order to emulate the film stock that you want. You'll see a watermark, so to get rid of it, you need either your login or a key. For me, I just need a login. And that's it, Dehancer is ready to go. Before looking at how to properly color grade with the software, at least, how Dehancer recommends color grading, I went ahead and tested out some footage. When I started, and pretty much still, my knowledge on film stocks is pretty limited. Luckily, if you go on Dehancer's website, you'll see a section for film stocks so that you can research the one that you're using, although they don't have everything on there, so if there is one missing, you'll need to look it up on the internet. Essentially, all of the effects and features that you would want out of a film stock is all organized on the right side of the screen. So everything that you want to do from halation to film compression to film vignettes, it's all gonna be there and you'll be able to enable which ones you want in your footage. Action. Letting your words sink in, putting up my walls to hide my weakness, shelter from the world. Look at me now. To show you guys what it looks like to color grade using this plugin, I'll be using some footage of a music video that we shot for FanFan Fan last year. And I have all that footage already uploaded here, so all we need to do is go into our color grading tab. I have some of the nodes already here, and on the last one I'll add Dehancer Pro. Scroll up to the top and you'll see it's going to ask for the source. We're going to choose the camera, which is the Sony, and luckily they've also provided a lot of other options since there are so many camera brands in this industry. So we're going to choose Sony, then we'll go down to Sony FX6, and we shot 800. Now the reason why I like to have nodes come in before this is so I can adjust my black levels and highlights. Then you'll just click over here to see your scopes. I like to go to Parade, and as you can see, we have some information going below the black level. So we're losing some information there. And you can see that the levels are, are kind of crushed. And that's why I like to have nodes right here. That way I can go into my primaries and adjust it from there. So let's raise up the blacks. 
Honestly, we could probably use the offset and just raise everything a little bit. Then we can lift up our blacks. Okay, there you go. So I'm pretty happy with that so far. And then we'll go on the right side again into our effect. They have every effect that you would need. And I like to start off with choosing the film stock that I want to use. So I guess it defaults to Vision 3 250. I guess we could leave it on there for now. We'll, we'll leave it at the default. So we'll go into the second node. And that's where I like to add uh, saturation. Go to HSV, then we'll go to channels. We'll enable, disable these two. Then we can increase our saturation. And I'm no expert in this. I just do this by like look and feel. So I'll adjust settings until I like what I see. We'll just leave out 1.6. Okay. So in here, you can also adjust uh, the color in here as well. So we will go to film developer. We'll enable it. And you can also do your color boost right there. So I'm okay with that. Um, at the top right here, you can also adjust your exposure, your, your temperature, your tint. So let's do temperature and see what that looks like. So go all the way to the left or you can go all the way to the right. It's pretty warm. So I just want it a little bit cooler. So there we go. We'll leave it right there. Um, then the next thing you can do is you can look at your film compression. So it's gonna raise the blacks and then it's gonna bring down the highlights. So here on the print, this is for I guess the like the print media that you'll be on. So I'll just choose Kodak 2383, and you'll see it changes instantly. It's a Kodak. Yeah. Okay. So right now for film grain, we have it at 35 ISO 250. Um, I want to see what 16. I want to do 16 millimeter. So we'll do 16 millimeter at ISO 50. And you'll see it already applies like the grain where the grain level should be at but you'll have to also do the same if you're going to do like collation so let's do that and change it at 16 and if you activate your mask mode then you'll be able to see exactly like what it's affecting it's a little bit hard to see but you can see it's affecting the highlights right there then we'll do, I'll, uh, I guess we'll add fill damage. You can add film breath, gate weave, overscan. Could do a little bit. Um, I'm okay with that, I guess. And this is what it looks like now, and I'll also show the before. Is it worth it? What's the purpose? I wanna ease your suffering Take it all then watch me be too It's love that hate only In this section, I'll be showing you guys a variety of footage just using this color grading software. This one in particular will be a trip that we took to New York shooting with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K camera and then we paired that footage with the TT Artisan's fisheye lens, so the 7.5 millimeter with an aperture of f2.
I was doing a quick review on the iPhone app uh, that the Enhancer provides, but unfortunately I didn't have enough space on my phone. So we're gonna try this again. So first let's select the footage that we're gonna use. I think we'll use this shot. This was from a project that we were doing uh, with TVU Network. What I've learned is that they have a list of presets created by the Dehancer team. So you can go ahead and choose what you want. So we're gonna go with, let's go with Kodak Vision 250D. Um, at first I thought that the app was kind of limited. I thought maybe there weren't as many features that you can use like you can on DaVinci Resolve. But I quickly corrected myself. Uh, as soon as you hit the edit tab, it's not just what pops up that you can edit. You can actually see at the very bottom as you scroll around, you can choose your film stock. You can use the developer. It has all of the features that you would want when you're editing and emulating a film. So it has compression, expand, print, color head, film grain. Um, one of the first things that I did was I went to my source and I adjusted my exposure. So let's see if we get that right. I think we're looking good right there. You can crop your footage, of course, but everything that you would find in DaVinci, you will find in the app, which is pretty awesome. It also looks like all of the things that are enabled, they have a blue dot on the side of the icons. So pretty cool. Um, it does run a slightly slow. Um, I think that's just because I'm also recording on my phone, but I'll export it in just a second. That way you can see the footage. I didn't get to this point, but it looks like they do offer a lot of different options for export video quality. 1080p is really all you need. You really don't need 4K when you're posting on social media. Um, I'm sure maybe if I shot in 4K it would pop up, but I shot in 1080p. And one thing that I did notice in DaVinci is that when you're rendering your footage that has Dehancer in the nodes, then it does slow down the rendering time just a little bit, but it makes sense. It's doing a lot of different things to emulate the film that you want. And it looks like it's kind of the same way with the app as well. So I'm gonna stop recording on the app and then I'll show you the shot. Hopefully I was able to provide enough examples and video footage to show you guys what it looks like to use this plugin. Now I'm not the best color grader in the world and I may have overdone it a little bit on the saturation, especially with some of the blues in the sky, but I'm pretty happy with the results that I got so far, especially since I've only been using it for like the past month or so. Since Dehancer is not node based and it's a built in effect, the pros with that is that it's very easy to understand and it's very user friendly. The downside to that is if you want more control over let's say halation or the bloom effects, then you'll probably want to use other programs that are node based. With the node based color grading plugins, you're going to get a lot more finer tuned controls. But with Dehancer, I think it gives you plenty of options to emulate the film and the look that you're looking for. And I almost forgot my favorite part about Dehancer is just the catalog of film stocks they have. They have a very large selection of different films that you can use. They have over 50 options to choose from. So there are plenty of ways to get a base look for what image you're trying to create. Now, as far as improvements, I really didn't have much. There are really only two things that I think could make it better. One of them being the color grading portion of it, being able to dial in, like let's say, if you wanted to take a specific blue and you wanted to change the hue or change the luminance, there doesn't really seem to be a section in the effect to be able to do that. And so what I've been doing is I've been placing nodes before that to get the colors that I want. So I think if Dehancer was able to add some sort of curves option, like built into the plugin, I think that would be really cool and make it really useful to dial in the colors that you want. And then the second improvement I think that would be awesome to have inside of the plugin is to have a built-in reference library. 
Now you could go on Shop Deck, you could go on other websites and download images and then if you have like a dual screen setup, you know, you have your reference on the left and you have DaVinci on the right. But it would be interesting to see if Dehancer could somehow implement a built-in reference library inside of the plugin. That way you could scroll down on the right side and then, you know, search the movie or the still that you're looking for and then you could be able to reference it right on the same screen. I don't know how they would do that because I don't think there are any plugins or any companies that have tried to do that. There isn't really much to say about the plugin. It's really easy to use and I'll be continuing to use it for the next year or so and we'll see where it takes us. Anyways, if you like the content or if you have any questions for us, feel free to like and comment down below or subscribe. We will see you on the next one.